Okay, Godot 4 is amazing, and I've started working on a FPS controller for Godot 4, and it's just blown me away how easy it is to do certain things. I thought I'd show you that today by making a very bare bones FPS controller with very minimal coding. It takes less than five minutes, I'm sure of it, and I'm gonna show you that today. So let's get into it. If you haven't created a project already, just start one up. So let's just jump into it. I'm gonna open up mine. It's gonna look a bit different because I've already created the world, but I don't have an FPS controller in here. So let's start. The first thing we need to do is create a character body 3D. They've changed the name on me. I find it hard to find it. Um, we just need a collision shape 3D as well and a camera. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that's just a child of the main character body 3D. And I'm just gonna rename this to main camera. Give this a collision shape. It can be anything you want, but capsule is typical. I like to just change the shape to a typical height rather than two meters. And uh, let's just bring this up so it's in the scene. And the other thing I like to do is also raise the camera up so it would be at some kind of height level. All right, let's just push this guy back a bit. So we're gonna add a script just like that. And the magic in Godot 4 is this template. I don't know if they had them in Godot 3, maybe in the later ones, I'm not too sure, but these templates are magic. So I'm gonna cr click create and right away, you've got pretty much everything you need if you run this game. You guys probably already know this. Godot 4 has been out for a while now. We've got everything we need for movement and jumping. We just don't have that mouse movement. So I'm gonna show you guys how to put that in today. So the very first thing that we wanna do is get access to that main camera node. Now I'm gonna access as a unique name because this is very basic and I'm sort of just assuming that we're gonna probably change things as this project gets more complicated. So I'm gonna call this main camera, get node brackets, string percentage, and then main camera. Okay, that's done. Okay, we need two variables to make this work. We're going to need to create a variable called camera rotation. And this is just going to be a vector two. And I'm just gonna initialize it as zero, zero. Okay, and then we also need a variable called mouse sensitivity. I don't know if I'm spelling that right. <laughs> Feel free to look it up and correct me in the comments. Uh, zero, zero point one, it's a small number because we're working in radians. So, you know, we don't, don't need much to do a full circle. I think it's just around three. So we just wanna make that number way smaller. You can always expose this setting later as your project grows so that your users can edit it and make it either more or less sensitive depending on their mouse. So um, then I'm just gonna add a ready function here. We're not gonna do much with this. Once again, keeping it simple. So we're gonna go input.set mouse mode and we're just going to turn it mouse mode captured so that'll just make it so the mouse doesn't show up on the screen as we work through this okay and the rest is all in the input function okay so the rest of this is happening in the input function i'm just going to add in a quick little check to see if we press the escape key uh, and basically expose the mouse if we do that. It just makes it easier to debug. We can always make this more complicated as time goes on, like I keep saying. And okay, so we've got that there. Okay, this is where the magic happens. We've got if event is input event mouse motion. We're gonna create a variable and we're gonna call it mouse event. Uh, we're gonna set it equal to event.relative multiplied by mouse sensitivity, which is what we set up there. 
And then we're going to call a function called camera look. And we're going to pass in that event. Okay, so let's create this function camera look. And I'm just going to call the variable movement. And it's a vector two. Okay, so what we do here is essentially we add our movement to the camera rotation variable. So this would be plus equals movement. Okay, then there's two functions we need to call. Transform dot basis equals basis and main camera dot transform dot basis equals basis. This is what makes it possible and I've spelled transform wrong. That's okay. And then there's two other functions we need to call, which is really the magic rotate object local and First, we always rotate in Y, so vector three, this is what this expects. You have to tell it what uh, vector you want to rotate. So this is vector three, zero, one, zero. There are other ways to define that variable. This is just what I like to do. Um, and it's negative camera rotation dot X. And that's that. I make a note here just in case you're playing around with this and you forget. First, rotate 6y. Then, you want to rotate the main camera instead of the kinematic body. Rotate. Actually, we might just copy because I can barely see my keyboard. Rotate object local and it's vector three again, zero, oh sorry, one, zero, zero. So we're doing the X rotation next and we'll call negative camera rotation dot Y and we'll go then rotate X. Okay. So the other thing we might also want to do is just clamp the rotation in the Y axis. So I'm going to call camera rotation dot Y equals clamp camera rotation dot Y negative 1.5 comma 1.2 because we are working in radians again so it's not going to be degrees you could convert these if you wanted to but it's easier just to directly key them in here okay so this is it looks like i forgot a comma there that's okay let's go again okay now we're working perfectly now the one thing you'll notice is that no matter where I turn my mouse, I'm always going forward. I'm pressing y, uh, W, I should say, right now. I'm always moving forward. Now, to me, this is pure magic because back in Godot 3.5, this was a little bit more complement, complicated to implement. But if you look down in this automatic script, they've got transform basis times vector three input directions. And this is what makes it work. It's why I'm rotating the kinematic body here and not the main camera. Now, if you rotate the character, it'll actually get that direction automatically just on the basis of how this is set up. So it's super easy. I don't know how long we've been recording for. This has been, it says 15 minutes on my screen, but you know, by the time I cut this up, it's gonna be even shorter. Um, so that is all you need to do. This is complicated to say the least. Um, why do we need to do transform basis equals basis? We're basically resetting the basis every time that we do a rotation. 
all these kind of things. They're very confusing. If you need to understand more or if you want to know how rotation really works, you can come to the docs and read about using 3D transforms as a whole thing. This is how I had to do it when I was working it out, you know, last year or the year before in Godot 3. Um, and here is basically the snippet that they give you for an FPS style controller, which is pretty similar to what I've given you here, except for the rotation for the main camera in the Y. Hey guys, Isaac from the future here. I just, um, I noticed that I missed explaining this function in my tutorial and I thought it was worth coming back and explaining um, just sort of what we're doing here. We're taking the input event mouse motion. So that's just a number on your screen, event.relative. Uh, so if you printed that out, it would just essentially be um, a coordinate that relates to the direction that your mouse is moving at any given time. And we can basically use this information. We pass it on to the camera look and we add that to the camera rotation and that just accumulates indefinitely. Obviously we clamp uh, the Y because we don't want to be able to spin around forever. But if we are turning on the uh, Y axis, then we want to be able to just spin forever. Um, and then we come down to the rotate object local. Now first we're going to do it in the Y, but we you might notice that we're using camera rotation dot X. So if you think about that with your mouse, you're just moving it left ways across the screen. And that's actually the X axis for your screen, but we want to spin on the Y. If you imagine like a pin going through your character's head, Y is the one that goes at the top and we're just turning that on its head. And then next we're going to rotate in the X and we're going to use the Y. So that's actually the same principle. When we push upwards on our screen, then that's actually the Y axis on our screen, but it's the X axis for our character. If you imagine just got your 3D gimbal, X goes through the character and we're rotating that. So that's your up and down. And that's sort of just a slight overview of how that works. And I thought that might be a bit nicer than just skipping that all together. So that's really it. If you're doing like a walking simulator, that's literally all you need. It's amazing. And it's so quick. Um, I can't believe it. I'm currently working on an FPS template for Godot 4. Uh, it's coming along pretty slowly, but uh, we're getting there and hopefully I'll have it up pretty soon to replace my old 3.5 one. Um, I tried just porting the 3.5 one and I didn't really like the way it was performing. I was using a lot of tweens. I don't know, something about it just isn't quite right. So I'm starting from scratch. And as I go along and I discover new things, I'll uh, show you guys how it's done. So hit that subscribe button. If you found this tutorial helpful, hit that like button. Uh, I'm Isaac from Shaft Games and I'll see you next time.